1989 Donruss Baseball Cards, 26 Most Valuable. Are the 1989 Donruss Baseball Cards your favorite baseball issue ever? Well, if you said yes, hmm, you might be alone in that opinion. The good news in that case would be that you won't have much trouble laying your hands on plenty of these beauties, because the truth is, 1989 Donruss was produced in huge quantities that makes them pretty easy to find even 30 years on. But that doesn't mean every 1989 Donruss baseball card is worthless. In fact, the cards next can fetch decent prices on eBay, provided that you're aiming for copies in top-notch graded condition. Without further ado then, here is a rundown of the most viable 1989 Donruss baseball cards based on actual sales prices for PSA 9 specimens. Number 26. 1989 Donruss Robin Yount. Number 55. Robin Yount sort of slid into the background among his fellow superstars after the glow of his 1982 MVP campaign wore off. All that changed in the summer of 1989, though, when Yount, having moved from shortstop to center field, once again put up a monster season that eventually landed him more MVP hardware. It was enough to get his cardboard moving again as collectors realized that this man was headed toward 3,000 career hits and the Hall of Fame. Value, 5 to $10. Number 25, 1989 Donruss Bo Jackson, number 208. Bo Jackson could pretty much do whatever he wanted on the baseball diamond once he set his mind to it. So Donruss went with him, sneaking around for a bunt attempt. Not exactly awe-inspiring or majestic, but different at least. Value, 8 to $10. Number 24, 1989 Donruss Kirby Puckett, number 182. After helping the Twins to a World Series title in 1987, Kirby Puckett upped his personal game in 1988, batting 356 with 24 home runs and 121 RBI. Suffice it to say, Puckett was one of the most popular cards in the 1989 set, and he nailed down that honor by winning his only American League batting crown that summer. It was one more step on the path to his Hall of Fame and hobby immortality. Value, 8 to $10. Number 23. 1989 Donruss Roberto Alomar, number 246. The son of a former major leaguer and the brother of a top-notch catching prospect, Roberto Alomar entered 1989 season fresh off a solid rookie season with plenty of hype surrounding him. He'd eventually pretty much live up to expectations, crafting a Hall of Fame career and ensuring that his cards maintain a strong collector base for decades to come. Value, 8 to $10. Number 22. 1989 Donruss, Mark McGuire, number 95. You don't hit 49 home runs as a rookie without causing quite a stir among collectors. But Big Mac didn't just stir the hobby. He toppled the whole darn apple cart on the strength of his Ruthian home runs and sun-hot rookie carts from 1985 to 1987. And even though his power took a step back in 1988, his cards were still huge deals when the 1989 set debuted. They still are, regardless of the PED stain that seems likely to keep them out of the Hall of Fame forever. Value, 8 to $12. Number 21. 1989 Donruss Jose Conseco, number 91. Conseco saw a big hunk of his limelight sucked up by his rookie teammate, Mark McGuire, in 1987, but he didn't let that get him down. Instead, Jose went out and recorded his first 40-40 season ever in 1988, copying American League MVP honors in the process and leading the A's to a championship. To say his cards were on fire was an understatement of coffee as good proportions, and some of that halo remains all these years later. Value, 8 to $12. Number 20, 1989 Donruss Edgar Martinez, number 645. After much hand-wringing, hemming and hawing, and staring at his name on the ballot for 10 years, the BBWAA finally elected Edgar Martinez to the Hall of Fame in 2019. 30 years earlier, Martinez made his base Donruss debut with this card that shows him in the field. That's significant because the knock on Edgar has always been that he was a designated hitter most of his entire career, diminishing his 312 batting average, 2,247 hits, and 309 home runs, at least in some eyes. Enough folks believe in Martinez's greatness, though, to keep his base Donruss debut in the upper echelons of the set. Value, 8 to $12. Number 19, 1989 Donruss Randy Johnson rookie card, number 42. Once upon a time, Randy Johnson was a mystery, a raw talent who scraped the sky when he pitched, a firebrand who could scorch the air with his fastball but had trouble finding the strike zone on a consistent basis. 
Things started to gel for the big unit, though, when the Montreal Expo sent him along with Gene Harris and Brian Holman to the Seattle Mariners in 1989 in an exchange for Mike Campbell and Mark Langston. 20 years, 300 wins, 4,800 strikeouts, five Cy Young Awards, and one comic all-star incident with John Crook later. And Johnson was a legend. Certainly among the top handful of left-handers ever, Johnson was a cinch for the Hall of Fame election when his name came up in 2015, and his 1989 Donruss rookie card was a cinch to appear at the top of this list. Value, 10 to $15. Number 18. 1989 Donruss Kurt Schilling rookie card, number 635. Love him or hate him, it's hard to deny the stats that Kurt Schilling put up during his major league career. 20 years, 216 to 146 record, 3.46 ERA, plus an 11 and 2, 2.23 ERA in the postseason. Oh, and he was a key member of that 2004 Boston Red Sox team that broke the curse of the Bambino. If you're more of a saber metric sort, Schilling checks in with an ERA plus of 127 and 79.6 war, which lands him 27th all time among starting pitchers, according to Jaws. All of that has Schilling looking like an eventual Hall of Famer, having collected 60.9% of the vote in his seventh shot at Cooperstown in 2019. And all of that makes his 1989 Donner's rookie card a popular piece, despite grumbling about Schilling's attitude, his post-career shenanigans, and the flood of 1989 that still washes over the hobby. Value, 10 to $15. Number 17. 1989 Donner's Craig Biggio rookie card, number 561. It may look a little funny to sing Craig Biggio and the Tools of Excellence here on his 1989 Donruss rookie card, but he started his professional baseball life as a catcher before transitioning to second base and the outfield. In fact, Biggio garnered Silver Slugger and All-Star honors behind the plate before making a position move in 1992, but anything the Houston Astros lost by swiping in Ed Trabanese for Biggio was made up in spades by adding years to Biggio's Hall of Fame career. Teaming with Jeff Bagwell and Derek Bell to form Houston's Killer Bees, Biggio ended up with 3,060 hits, 291 home runs, 414 stolen bases, and a Cooperstown plaque. And of course, one of the most valuable cards in the 1989 Donruss set. Value, $10 to $15. Number 16, 1989 John Smoltz, rookie card, number 642. John Smoltz took an unusual route to Cooperstown, but that doesn't really matter. He still got there. One of the original members of the Atlanta Braves' vaunted rotation of the 1990s, Smoltz didn't find full-blown success of teammates like Tom Glavin, Steve Avery, and Greg Maddox right away, but he finally nabbed his own Cy Young Award in 1996 at the age of 29. By 2000, though, the flamethrower had thrown out his elbow and required Tommy John surgery, then came back in 2001 as a reliever. After three-plus seasons as a lockdown closer, Smoltz returned to the Braves' rotation before finishing out his career with the Boston Red Sox and St. Louis Cardinals, with one season each. In the end, Smoltz ended up with an unusual but stellar line of 213 to 155, 3.33 ERA, 154 saves, and 3,084 strikeouts. An amazing Hall of Fame resume that bumps his rookie cards toward the tops of sets like this, value-wise. Value, 10 to $15. dollars Number 15, 1989 Donruss Gary Sheffield, rookie card, number 31. Once upon a time, Gary Sheffield was the most talented young player in the game, with a pedigree as Dwight Gooden's nephew that virtually guaranteed success in the major leagues. Then came his season of discontent, when Sheffield was unhappy with the Milwaukee Brewers, and Gooden started to slide performance-wise too. Suddenly, Sheffield wasn't so can't miss. But a funny thing happened on the way to the scrap heap. First, Sheffield was traded to the San Diego Padres along with Jeff Kellogg in exchange for Ricky Bones, Matt Miski, and Jose Valentin in 1992. Then it was off to the expansion Florida Marlins in 1993, part of a deal that brought Trevor Hoffman to the Friars. In San Diego and then in Miami, Sheffield found the stroke that he was supposed to have, and he became an MVP candidate. Never one to be warm and fuzzy with teammates or locals, Sheffield sort of bounced around for the next decade plus after he helped the Marlins win a World Series in 1997. To the Los Angeles Dodgers, Atlanta Braves, New York Yankees, Detroit Tigers, New York Mets. Along the way, Sheffield put up Hall of Fame numbers that included 2,689 hits, 509 home runs, 
1,676 RBI, 253 stolen bases, and a 60.5 career war. He's found that Cooperstown voting is a hard row, though. But Sheffield still holds enough hobby sway to make this list. Value, 10 to $15. Number 14. 1989 Donruss Don Mattingly, number 74. It's true that Don Mattingly's best baseball days as a player were behind him in 1989, but he did manage to play a full season that summer and rebound in his offensive performance a bit from what was considered a down year in 1988. It's also true that Mattingly was the face of the hobby in the 1980s and that the boom couldn't have happened, at least to the extent that it did, without his emergence in 1984. And the fact that you could pull his tops, Fleer, and Donruss cards from fresh wax packs, even as he was battling with Yankees teammate Dave Winfield for the American League batting crown. Madden Lee falls short of Hall of Fame standards by most reckonings, but his baseball cards still feel special even 30 years on. This one is no exception. Value 10 to $15. Number 13. 1989 Donruss Barry Bonds, number 92. By 1989, Barry Bonds had established himself as a star for the Pittsburgh Pirates, but his well-rounded skill set wasn't flashy enough to really light his cards on fire. Not when his cardboard was fighting for shelf space with bashers like Mark McGuire, Jose Conseco, and plenty of others. Of course, it turned out that the scouting reports were right. Bonds could pretty much do anything he wanted to do on the diamond, and he ended up actually doing most of it. Eventually, his cards pretty much caught up with his talent, and even today, after all the bad blood and all the fall from grace, early career entries like this 1989 Donneris Bonds still holds plenty of sway in the hobby. Value 10 to $15. Number 12. 1989 Donneris Mike Schmidt, number 193. Although Mike Schmidt looks as powerful and generally spectacular as ever on his 1989 Donneris card, this issue would quickly turn into a cardboard eulogy. That's because the greatest third baseman of all time hung up his spikes for good in late May of 1989, about a third of the way through the season. For Schmitty fans, guilty as charged, every wax pack brought a sense of dread the rest of the summer as the specter of the Phil's greatness looms just beyond the next Jose Oquendo. Value, 10 to $15. Number 11. 1989 Donruss Ricky Henderson, number 245. Ricky Henderson returned to the Oakland A's for the 1989 season, which makes this Donruss card one of the last to feature him with the Yankees. And even though Donruss missed out showing Henderson in his fabled pinstripes, this is still one of the most popular cards in the set. Value 10 to $15. Number 10. 1989 Donruss Wade Boggs, number 68. Wade Boggs fell off a cliff in 1989. I mean, after four straight American League batting titles from 1985 through 1988 and batting at least 357 in each of those seasons, the chicken man fell all the way to 333 in 1989. Of course, that's still an otherworldly number among mere mortals, and Boggs was still a plenty popular pull from wax packs across the land that summer. Still is today, thanks to those 3,010 lifetime hits, 328 career batting average, and that nifty Hall of Fame plaque of his. Value, 10 to $15. Number 9. 1989 Donruss, Greg Maddox, number 373. Maddox posted his first winning record in 1988 with 18 and 8. A fact that hardly registered with collectors thanks to his toiling for the fourth place Cubs and to the paltry records that he put up in his first two campaigns. When the professor followed up with 19 victories and helped bring a division title to the north side, though, his profile started to climb, and it never looked back. Today, Greg Maddox cards are hobby royalty pretty much across the board, a status befitting the pasteboards featuring one of a handful of the greatest pitchers of the last 50 years. Value, 10 to $15. Number 8. 1989 Donruss, Tony Gwynn, number 128. After a jaw-dropping 370 batting average in 1987, Tony Gwynn slid all the way to 313 in 1988 and still won a batting title. He'd win another 336 in 1989 on his way to eight total crowns, 3,000 plus hits, and a place in history as the Padres legend and a Hall of Famer. Not surprising then that this mid-career card, like pretty much all of Mr. Padres' cards, makes the cut on our list. Value 10 to $15. Number 7. 1989 Donruss Don Mattingly, Diamond King, number 26. Everything that goes for the base Mattingly card goes for his Diamond King, too. 
This was Manning Lee's second Diamond King. 1985 was the other. And it's another Dick Pettis masterpiece. We couldn't get enough of Manning Lee in the 1980s, though, so no one was complaining about the extra Donnie baseball card. And this one still brings interest on eBay and other venues. Value 10 to $15. Number 6. 1989 Donruss Ozzie Smith, number 63. You could make an argument that Ozzie Smith was in many ways the face of baseball in the 1980s. Here you had a guy who redefined defensive play at a position already known for fielding prowess and a key member of the perennial contenders and frequent champs of one sort or another in St. Louis. Ozzie even upped his offensive game as the decade proceeded, leaving no doubt that he'd eventually take his rightful place in Cooperstown. So all in all, how could the last honors card of the wizard from a decade he helped define not make our list? Value 10 to $15. Number 5. 1989 Donruss, Nolan Ryan, number 154. If Nolan Ryan appears in a baseball card set, that Ryan card has a 99.9999999 chance of being one of the most valuable cards in the set. Okay, that's probably a slight exaggeration. This particular card has the added bonus of being the last regular Donruss issue to show him as a member of the Astros. It's a great action shot too. What's not to love? And collectors still do. Value fifteen to twenty dollars. Number four, nineteen eighty nine Donruss Cal Ripken Jr. Number fifty one. The Orioles of the late nineteen eighties were terrible, and that taint extended even to their franchise icon. Were Cal Ripken's tanking numbers from nineteen eighty seven through nineteen ninety responsible for Baltimore's struggles, or did the bad teams around him drag down Iron Cal? It's a classic Oriole and A conundrum that turned out not to matter too much by the time Ripken put up one of his greatest all-around seasons in 1991. And with his second MVP award in tow, Ripken could get back to the business of chasing down Luke Gehrig and collectors could smile on his late 1980s cards again, happy to airbrush the bad seasons from our memory and focus on the beauty of junk wax cow. Value 15 to $20. Number 3. 1989 Donruss George Brett, number 204. After two years at 290, Brett had pushed his batting average back above 300, 306, in 1988. That surge might have helped the popularity of his 1989 Donruss card out of the pack, but the truth is, none of Brett's cardboards needed any help at that point. The man was a legend, a status he reinforced with his third batting title at age 37 in 1990, and his 3,000th hit in 1992, and a Hall of Fame plaque in 1999. Value $15 to $20. Number 2. 1989 Donruss John Crook, rookie card, number 86. John Crook wasn't just Randy Johnson's comic crutch in interleague play. Indeed, for most of his 10-year big league career, Crook was a constant threat to hit 300, and he crafted his exit to make sure he landed exactly on that number. Along the way, though, stops with the Padres, Philadelphia Phillies, and the Chicago White Sox. Crook also showed some power, finishing with 100 home runs among his 1,170 hits. He was also a key member of that 1993 Phils crew that made it all the way to the World Series, only to be dispatched by Joe Carter's historic Game 6 homer. Still a popular analyst, Crook is also a college baseball coach who maintains a high enough profile to keep his cards on lists like this one. Value, 15 to $20. Number 1. 1989 Donruss Ken Griffey Jr. Ricky Card, number 33. Anytime you see the words Ken Griffey and Jr. and Ricky Card in a card description, you can be sure it's going to sit at the top of the value heap for whichever set it's in. The 1989 Donruss Jr. Rookie is certainly no exception. The only question surrounding Griffey when he retired was whether he'd be the first ever unanimous Hall of Famer. The fact that he didn't quite clear that bar, even though Mariano Rivera did in 2019, doesn't diminish Griffey's hobby cachet one whit. This card may not be upper deck number one, but it's still an iconic hunk of junk wax cardboard. Value $25 to $30. Waxpackgods.com